So as expected, a lot of people were concerned with safety with my wooden propeller backpack frame. I made that in a hurry out of wood, but my original plan was to make it out of aluminum. So I actually took a pretty intensive welding course over the summer at the local community college. This program is normally meant for professionals who are actually looking to weld for their career, uh, but I was just looking for some cheap college credits. And I also wanted to learn how to weld. But I was there from 8 in the morning to like 2 or 3 in the afternoon every day for like 10 weeks. And I tried just about every welding process that there is. It was kind of, I mean, other people would be welding pipe, only welding pipe for that entire 10 weeks because that's part of their longer program. But for me, the teacher was like, yeah, you'll just teach you everything. But since it was a professional program, they expected me to have all my personal protective equipment. Um, so I actually had to buy. Now I've got all this stuff. I've got, I've got shades and uh, grinding masks, shields and welding helmets and leathers and gloves and brushes and pliers and I've been dying to use it. So I did some networking and I found a TA at the local university here that I went to um, who said that he could let me use their shop if he was there also. So he came in after hours and worked on his truck and stuff while I welded for about 10 hours collectively over the course of a few weeks. And so let's do it, let's weld. If you want to know more about the different welding processes, Brady from Practical Engineering recently made a video just about that. I highly recommend it. I'll link it right here. For this project, I'm going to be using the gas tungsten arc welding process on aluminum, better known as TIG welding, tungsten inert gas, where you have a tungsten electrode that's not supposed to erode with a shielding gas, and you use a filler rod. And this is really good. You can be really, like, you have very fine, precise control of your arc and the power and the melt puddle and the amount of filler you're adding. And it's like an art form, it's like a pen. It's like, yeah, it's like penmanship. And um, it's pretty hard, especially with aluminum because aluminum, you have to use AC. It has to push and pull back and forth because the aluminum oxide is so gnarly and you have to break it up. As opposed to an old school 60 Hertz AC welder, uh, the newer ones have a high frequency pulsed square wave type thing. That pushing and pulling helps to break up oxides and contaminants. Aluminum conducts heat so well that you have to like heat the entire part up before it'll start to melt. As soon as it starts to melt, you gotta really back off the power or else you'll blast a hole through your material. Anyways, let's get welding.
Stop clogging my flutes. Yeah. All right, here's version two. All aluminum carbon fiber prop. Motor is soft mounted with a rubber gasket and the screws are Loctited in there. I have a handheld controller now. It's just a servo tester with everything direct soldered, except for this joint right here. It's a normal servo connector. And so uh, if this gets unplugged, the motor automatically stops. The fail safe is just a, a hard brake, stop the motor. So no nut. I have not tried a full thrust test yet. So. Uh, see if this works or not. see people with that since I flew out here. <laughs> I flew out here with a electric airplane called a Puddle Master. Okay. And it had a fuselage like a boat and it had two little pylons out in the way and it had a two, a two staffs up and a pusher prop. And I could land it on the snow out here because it was just like water you see and I could come in and land it. I had a lot of fun with it you know but that's been 25 years ago I suppose. <laughs> huh. I haven't flown one of these. That flew pretty good, did it? Well, it's not supposed to fly. It's just a back-mounted <laughs> propeller. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it just caught on fire. Well, take care of it and enjoy it. Okay. As long as you can. <laughs> My plane has long since been gone. I have a few other ones around yet, but I don't fly them anymore. I've had my 90th birthday already, and I thought it was time to quit flying. <laughs> oh, okay. So well, take care. Enjoy the snow. What an interesting thing. Um. That's so interesting. So with the battery... Oh, it's not unplugged. Oh man, I hope my motor's okay, holy crap. Okay, so I thought I had unplugged it, but it was not unplugged. Anyways. Now it's unplugged, batteries are unplugged. It smells wonderful. That's weird, because uh, everything I know says that that should have worked just fine. Yeah, that thing got really, really hot. So other than the fire, that was really cool. And this bat, this uh, speed controller has a built-in PEC, which is very, very rare for these large speed controllers. So it was, it, that was convenient uh, for the time being. Interesting, okay. Goodbye. I admittedly should have done some power testing with a watt meter before running it at full power. I really, I mean, that was dumb of me. Uh, and I will do that next time. I've thought about using a gas engine instead because I love engines, but um, I don't think they'd get the proper cooling and I already have so much electric stuff right now, but it's still super discouraging because this stuff's freaking expensive, man. So a producer with Discovery Channel Canada decided that she wants to do a, a five minute segment on this project and send a film crew down and everything. So based off of that, I've decided to quickly buy a new ESC and get this thing working. I got a Castle Creations 160 amp ESC 
and I'll be doing proper testing with a watt, with a power meter and everything. Anyways, thanks for watching, and hopefully next time I'll be using it safely.